we'll get right to it. I know you're a busy man. I uh, really appreciate this, this call. Um, this is definitely an answer to prayer. So let me tell you, I mean, I'm part of a prayer task in Nashville, prayer coalition, and we have over 400 churches praying. Uh, we did a 40 day fast uh, just a couple of months ago a coalition of concerned citizens got together and then uh, I was praying for a cure basically and two weeks ago I learned about you and came across your news flash I stumbled onto the breaking news that you have found a simple cure that's working in what I hear is 100 percent of the cases and that day I heard about that a friend of mine called and said my mom's got COVID and I said well I'll get to you tonight I got some news for you the next day how's your mom doing she passed away last night and I was just devastated to hear that. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I have this cure and I was just about to get it to you. So now God is answering prayer in a big way and it's made my part of my mission is to get this news out. So uh, I guess I'm going to introduce Dr. Richard Bartlett from Texas here. And, um, you know, I want to tell you, ask you is like, how did you first learn about this? Tell us a little about it. You know, uh, since January, we've all been watching with horror what was happening in China, uh, where people were just dropping in the streets. The country was quarantining 70 million of its own citizens, shutting everything down. Uh, it seemed like there was no hope. Uh, they had incinerators parked out, mobile incinerators parked outside of their hospital. And uh, it was just a, it, it was a nightmare to watch. And then we watched it creep across Italy to uh, France, to Spain, to the UK, and then across to the United States. And uh, by March, I work in the emergency room, and in March I was doing a 48-hour shift. And during that 48-hour shift, I uh, was praying, God, what do I do if someone comes in here with COVID and they tell me I can't breathe? Hmm. And uh, I was praying in between patients. You have a call room that you can go take a cat nap in. I woke up convinced that God had given me a winning strategy and an understanding of how to, how to deal with COVID. And within a week, I had two patients, a husband and wife, that I employed the strategy on, and it worked. And it continued to hold. 100% of my patients are alive. Zero mortality rate. Wow. And, and so we're talking about since March. Uh, I'm not uh, keeping a tally of my patients. At this point, I'm having so many people reach out to me from across the world, but certainly across the United States, that I'm referring them to other doctors because I already am extremely busy. And there are doctors across the United States that are stumbling upon the same winning strategy that I uncovered. Many of them are starting to employ it because they saw my original interview that was done in Dallas. But the bottom line is all the good answers come from God. And yes. this is a solution. You know, <laughs> COVID is a respiratory inflammatory disease. It's a respiratory virus, SARS-2, that attaches to ACE receptors in the lungs and then triggers a, a cytokine storm, a fancy word for inflammatory chemicals released that cause multi-organ failure. And that's what kills people. Yeah. Tell us a little about the inflammatory chemicals and how it matches with the uh, yeah. cure. So the, the inflammatory chemicals will include uh, interleukin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 11, 13, 15, SCF, GM, CSF. Uh, thromboxanes are also released that increase the uh, tendency to have dangerous clots throughout the body, whether it's clots in the lungs or heart or brain. Right. Uh, or uh, it also causes the release of uh, cy cyclooxygenase, which is blocked by ibuprofen, Aleve, but all of these inflammatory chemicals, when I did the research, going and doing due diligence uh, in researching what's already been done with inhaled budesonide, which is what I'm using, it's a, resp it's a respiratory anti-inflammatory solution for this respiratory inflammatory disease of COVID. The same and thing as my users have. So inhaled budesonide, right. uh, budesonide, when I did the research, blocks interleukin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 11, wow. 13, 15, SCF, GM, CSF, thromboxanes, wow. cyclooxygenase, all the things, it's a perfect overlay. When you look at the two, this is a perfect answer. And yeah. so uh, what we're having is uh, doctors uh, around the world now employing this. I've, I've gotten calls today from uh, El Salvador, Australia, um, uh, Honduras, wow. uh, all over the world, people are treating their citizens early. 
Yeah. And so no hospitalization, no hospitalization at all. Actually, when you talk about hospitals, the most extreme situation is in the ICU. And a hospital south of San Antonio emptied their ICU in 48 hours when they employed inhaled yeah. budesonide, according to my protocol. All nice. their patients improved and went home. And the nurse anesthetist told me up until they started this strategy of inhaled budesonide, which can be given in the ICU, can be given in the hospital, but why not start it in, at, at home? Right. And so they, before, after they started using this, uh, everybody went home. But before that, they said 50% of the people that ended up in the ICU with COVID were eventually intubated and transferred to another hospital. When you cross that line, research uh, shows that a third of the people who get intubated are going to die. Yeah. And so you don't want to cross that line of having to intubate someone. That should be the last resort. Yeah. By the way, speaking of last and first, we've been uh, sold a losing strategy from the beginning. And that strategy actually originated in communist China where they were saying, don't treat until late stages. Mild to moderate symptoms don't come in. And so what that did was it made us have only late disease that was starting to get treated. And that meant they get hospitalized, right. which right. nosocomial infections, nosocomial is a fancy word for infections and uh, iatrogenic or is a fancy word for um, uh, uh, problems that you would get in a hospital or in a uh, healthcare system. Uh, those problems, all of a sudden you stepped into another level of potential problems. So people get put in the hospital. If they get intubated, they're, uh, they're isolated. Uh, they're isolated from their families. Mm -hmm. this, new no this new normal has been pushed upon the American people uh, because of this disaster called uh, COVID, which has been handled, mishandled from the beginning. Mishandled. Because I we agree. followed this strategy that was then used in Italy. And look how, how did that work? Over 30,000 died in Italy. And then, and then we saw it slowly creep across Europe. They used the same strategy in France, 30,000 deaths. Same strategy in Spain, 30,000 deaths. Same strategy in UK, 30,000 deaths. Late treatment was the strategy. Otherwise, no treatment or late treatment is what we've been told. And that's what's been forced on the American people. We've never done anything like that before in the United States. In the United States, in the United States, we have early detection and early treatment for heart attacks, for heart disease, stroke, and cancer, and all infectious diseases. This is the only disease in the American history where we have followed a foreign strategy of healthcare of late treatment only and withholding care unless it's late treatment. Right. And right. so, how has that that has not worked very well? No. So, doc, thousands of doctors across the United States have stumbled upon a strategy of early treatment yes. and with a winning strategy. And I believe this is a absolute answer to prayer uh, yeah. that we have an, a respiratory anti-inflammatory solution that's been out forever, that's super safe. This medicine has been out for 25 years. It's been used safely on two pound premature babies in the ICU. That's pretty delicate. Yeah. And it's been used on the fragile elderly in nursing homes and everyone in between. It is so safe. We have 25 million Americans that have asthma. Millions are using this medicine every day. Yes. And so yes. we know it's safe. And here's the other thing. It's super cheap. It's right. three, you, you, for $3, patients, many patients are getting immediate shortness of uh, relief from their shortness of breath and their chest pain. And they're recovering weeks sooner because they're being treated early. Amazing. And they're, uh, for $3 at home, on their couch watching Netflix <laughs> yeah. for the cost of $3, which is what it costs for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. And so uh, that's wow. for each dose is about $3 generic. And so this is readily available at every pharmacy in the United States. I, I, I am convinced that God had the solution for us before we had the problem. I agree with you 100%. And, and, God's answering and he prayer. He does answer prayer. He does right. answer prayer. Yeah. It's amazing. So there's no more need to wait it out for a vaccine. We have a solid solution. Uh, you have to get to it early, right? 
And uh, I want to get this news out to the COVID doctors, to the 400 churches I represent. Uh, we were praying Ezekiel 37 uh, the other day about the breath of God, 37.9. And so I want to say a prayer before we let you go. So uh, I, want, I want us to pray. So I want to thank the Lord for his work. And I thank you, Father God, for Dr. Bartlett. He's a hero, God. We're changing our story, Music City USA, to a worship city as God's breathing a fresh breath over the sick uh, and, and a massive wave of new health is coming. So we speak life. We speak life and healing in Jesus' name. Through Ezekiel 37, 9, we prophesy to the breath of Nashvillians across the state and across the nation to get awakened and come back to life in Jesus' name. Well, doctor, I just thank you so much. You're awesome. And I'm just thanking you for this simple interview. We're going to spread the news to our friends, our doctors. Anything else you want to leave us with at the end here? You must be getting a lot of calls. What in Taiwan, right? The, it's low there too. And Singapore and Japan, right? Yeah, let's talk about that for just a second. Taiwan, 24 million pop, densely populated uh, on an island that's a third the size of New York. Um, and only seven have died during this whole pandemic over seven wow. months. Are you kidding? So they don't they do not need to vaccinate 24 million people because seven people have died over seven months. Unbelievable. So if the, and we have an excellent health care system, but our health care system has been told since January, stand down. Mm, wow. And, well, and I'm saying we need to rise up. We need to treat right. our we need to do the right thing. We yeah. need to treat our patients. And there's yeah. an answer. There's a solution. This that's is right. a case closed. This mystery, mystery has been solved. Uh, <laughs> COVID is over. The headline I'm going to have is going to say, no more need die. No more need to die. Simple as I, that. I agree. <laughs> All right, doctor. You've been a blessing tonight. Keep up the good work. we got people praying for you. And we'll see you on the other side. All right? Thank you. Blessings. Bye-bye.